So I'm fired up because in this deep dive training, we're going to be looking at some of the biggest mistakes, some of the biggest opportunities, and some of the best ways right now to get views, especially if you're just starting on YouTube or you have a small channel. But even if you're more established, we're actually going to be diving into some actual tactics as we look at some different YouTube channels around different topics that a channel of any size can learn from. So if you're fired up, smash the like button. And today I'm joined by my friend, Rob from vidIQ. Rob, how's it going? Hey, Sean, thanks for having me on once again on the Think Media Podcast. I'm feeling all of the vibes. Hello to everybody joining us. I just have one thing I need to do since we are. Oh, we are live. Officially live, live. officially live now. (laughs) Yeah, so I'm fired up and we are looking at some channels today from our Video Ranking Academy community and we're starting it off with Flip It Furniture. And so our goal here is to learn about the insights, the uh, maybe mistakes, points of improvement and thinking about as you watch this, what could you learn um, from this channel and what are maybe even some tips for you to update your own content. Right here, we've got a description that is leaving a lot of details lacking without, you know, starting right here. Um, update your whole channel, meaning this description, at least give me something here. Email, how, if somebody wants to read out, reach out to you, you have 62,000 subscribers. What if people want to do brand deals? What if uh, companies want to reach out to you? YouTube gives you a place to connect an email address so that brands could easily reach out to you or anybody that wants to collab or biz dev. Hint, do not use the email address that you use to log into your YouTube channel because you don't wanna give that out there to hackers. And so if you go to, for example, um, our page here on the Think Media Podcast channel, we've got a description, a few calls to action, no email, and I'm not even sharing my screen, but uh, no, no email, you can't reach us, but I want to say (laughs) that I think you can on Think Media. And so this is why YouTube is changing. We can learn, uh, take a little bit of our own medicine, but we do have two channels. So we've got a description on Think Media, View for business inquiries, view email address. Again, do not use the email address that you use to log into your account. We actually got hacked on our Think Media podcast account. I would argue the account you use to to log into YouTube should be used for basically nothing else. Um, And then you can link up your links. It could be any kind of product services you have, any social media accounts. This again is not gonna be a key to growing your channel, However, um, this is definitely something that'd be worth updating. With 4.7 million views on the channel, Rob, 62,000 subscribers, 175 uploads. Um, As we work our way to the main content, I would love to see some more community tab posts, but I am grateful that you are doing some surveys. That's good. I would love to see you use square images and a YouTube link to promote a video and not just a video. You'll get more reach there. And I um, would love to uh, see more community tab action. Um, You did start a podcast and it's labeled as a podcast. And if y'all did not know, there's now a podcast tab. There's so many things on YouTube now. There's videos, there's shorts. There's been zero live streams on this channel. If there was live streams, there would be a live streams tab. And now there's a podcast tab. And that is if you classify a playlist as a podcast and do a few other things, it becomes a podcast. And it is official in the US that YouTube music now is a place where you can consume podcasts. So that's a whole other thing. But that brings us to the the core stuff. We got our cover image, we got our avatar, we've got our thumbnails, we've got our titles. And in just a second, we'll preview the video. But Rob, I'm curious, what is your thoughts on this channel? First of all, I love the channel name, uh, Flip It uh, Furniture. To me, that communicates so much. I would love to see a little more description in the about section, uh, as we've already established. And what I think of when I hear the term flip it in in terms of furniture is that you're going to buy something cheap, you're going to pimp it out, and then you're going to potentially sell it for a profit. So is there a way to maybe emphasize that a little bit more in the thumbnails 
more than just furniture makeover, which is what they tend to be using in the uh, thumbnails right now. I'm thinking, could there be a, almost like a stakes added to this, like you bought it for 20 bucks, but you were able to flip it for a profit of like 600 bucks or however much you sold it. Again, uh, Sean, because we're lacking a little bit of detail on the description, and on the thumbnails, I'm not exactly sure what I'm getting into, but the channel name is such a great start for the channel. And you've just now uh, moved over to the um, most popular ones. I think the thumbnails themselves, the, the detail of the furniture is high class and it has a certain style, which I think relates well to this audience. But again, just with that bog standard furniture makeover text on the thumbnails maybe there's a there's a better way to sell the videos a bit more so that they have more um i guess regular cadence because we're seeing these um viral videos that have half a million views but then I, I as i was looking through the rest of their content i think their their staple view count was between like four and six thousand views which is good but i feel as if there's room for more um reach with a wider audience yeah. And one of the things I want to shout out here is, you know, I can spy on somebody else's channel using vidIQ. By the way, today's video is brought to you by vidIQ and a little bit more on that later. But um, using the tools here, we can look at the stats, 84,000 views a month, 600 new subscribers. It says one upload, but there is four bumps. And let's see if we are doing shorts. The last short was uploaded. Shining bright like a diamond. Popular music. Turn it on. Yeah, up. nice work. But um, you got to protect your copyright on this uh, copyright claims on this stream, Sean. Um, <laughs> April 10th. So active in yep. about a month ago on a short. And then the last upload was also um, six days ago, 13 days ago. So it looks about one a week. But one of my favorite tabs is the trending tab that vidIQ gives you. And you could also see this in your real-time analytics. And this is the dream of our Video Ranking Academy, a two-year-old video that's getting 18.5 VPH, and VPH stands for views per hour. And so you get one video you make years ago, and it's still dri driving views and bringing you subscribers. And so that would be probably heavily search-based, I'm guessing, although it would, certainly could still so, be yeah. being recommended via suggested videos. Um, and around maybe a certain topic. So all of that's great. Let's check out a little preview of a video. I've got my husband helping me out with some prep work today. So he's gonna take out all the drawers and mark them one, two, three, four, so we don't get them mixed up. Then he's gonna remove all the hardware so I can clean it up. We flip the piece upside down, take our vacuum and make sure that there's no dust or debris or any webs or anything like that. We also do the insides of the drawer cubbies just to make sure everything's nice and clean. Then we use our white lightning cleaner, which I already have. I love the kind of DSLR you're using. Um, good video, nice room light. Uh, the voiceover meets music that's mixed well meets um, Wet rag with uh, water, a little bit of music cleaner residue left on that piece. meets storytelling and kind of petting into the story is all a very cool great uh, vibe. And I'm blending. I wait 24 hours in between my coats just to make sure that I'm not reactivating the first coat. Stunning furniture makeover. Reactivate with water. Blending so make terra mistake, clay paint. So it's a good video. And your ability to clearly at 62,000 subscribers, your ability to create great content is clear. I think an opportunity that you have there, though, is in choosing your topics. Um, sometimes your view count might be a little bit lower just because how broad a pure, how interested are people in to a particular painting style or the way a furniture makeover is positioned. And for your subscribers, I feel like that's kind of what this energy gives me. Like the people who love you, the people who know you, helping me out with some they cut right into the story. Um, and what I might suggest is if we go seems like that's that's been a certain I I what what's interesting is yeah I wonder if you used a little bit of how to and if anybody who knows me they know I love starting a video with how to and this isn't to say even in replacing any content you're doing it's saying in addition to 
they get about like these practical videos. Here's another one with the four views per hour, two years old, just because it's how to remove bubbles from laminate furniture. It's the type of content that would continue to be viewed and like how to solve a specific problem, even within um, the video itself. As a side note, I always like to think about working smarter, night, not harder. And not with some prep work. perhaps one of the ways to do that is if you're going to film this video anyways, it's a whole makeover. Is there a video inside of this video that actually might end up getting more views than the video itself? Like quick tips for sanding down such like how to sand down antique furniture or something. And during the time, which I would imagine you were filming this video in a uh, one setting uh, or all the clips, and then you went back and narrated it later. So if you had all the clips anyways, you might say, are you curious about how to, so even with the footage on your hard drive, there could be videos positioned around like one question, one answer, which could be a way to leverage the content that you have even more. Um, but anything else as we land the plane, uh, Rob? I think the creator does a fantastic job of creating a video that's of a high production value. Like you can see the spending a lot of time with the edit and the uh, voiceover throughout absolutely critical so that's brilliant fantastic the one thing i noticed in this particular video that we were watching sean um was that um it wasn't this one i think it was one before but i liked how the creator jumped straight into the video but at the same time you mentioned something which i thought was interesting that it's, it would be really good video for subscribers and people who are familiar with their content but how accessible is it for somebody who's account encountering your content for the first time? Because it kind of just drops us in there without maybe explaining why uh, they were, why your husband was there working on this furniture, because the essence of your channel, as far as I'm aware from your channel name is Flip It Furniture. So I think a little bit more of an introduction of what you were working on, why you were working on it, uh, how this may help a, a viewer watching the content, you know, and, and again, going back to that idea of buy cheap, flip it into something that's more valuable. I missed that, I guess, value proposition, but it was just that one video, Sean. So I don't know if that's uh, the same way they introduce all of their videos. Yeah, I feel the same way regarding the hook uh, that potentially could uh, have happened there. And, you know, one thing I, one final thing again, how can we apply this to everybody watching all the way back on that first video, chalk paint furniture? Um, I do think there could be some, you know, powering up of the title, powering up of the positioning, yep. and then, and then powering up of the hook. Um, and so one of my favorite tools is uh, the vidI, uh, vidIQ AI title recommendation tool. Nice. So I'm just going to type in chalk paint furniture here and look at maybe some of the um, uh, title recommendations. Can't believe what this furniture looks like off after a chalk paint oh, makeover. Oh, nice is that. Watch how she transforms old furniture with chalk paint in just five yeah. minutes. What's, what, what I also love about if you do this ideation using a tool like this before you press record, or actually it's not necessarily a problem because if you just got the, the B roll before you record the voiceover perhaps, because if you know this, you're like, and it maybe didn't take you five minutes to do it, but you start thinking about, you know, you could see how to transform it in just five minutes. These things could could uh, could be helpful. And so it's really, wouldn't you say, Rob, it's not even just title recommendations. It's really angle recommendations. Mm. It's it's almost idea recommendations. True. It, it's injecting curiosity and intrigue. And in, in the, those particular titles, it was almost like a fear of missing out. You know, if you do not watch this video, then you're not going to see how we can transform terrible furniture into something that's amazing and looks genuine and authentic. And as if you'd just gone into a really expensive store and bought it, it, it kind of conjures up all of those ideas in, in your head from a title that's about 50 to 70 characters long. So I love, this, those rec I love those recommendations. This will close really the strong. loop on what I was suggesting. Like what video inside of the video you already made could you make? transform old furniture with this chalk paint trick. So it, at some point in there, you did the chalk paint. My thought is this is a 15 minute video. It's story based. 
I uh, I did actually find my way all the way over to the older one um, that's 660,000 views. So this one is crushing. But is there one trick? Is there one thing you know that's like, hey, to get chalk paint to look a certain way or whatever, and and then um, footage that's already on your hard drive, fresh, you know, voiceover, you show them the trick and or you just narrate it too. You could always just sit down and be like, hey, you know, recently we worked on a project, you're on camera and then you cut to the voiceover. Uh, you know how to create content so you can figure that out. But again, I love this idea of if you're doing the takeaway is if you're doing something longer, here'd be my example. I do a lot of like desk setups because tech, you know, microphones, cameras, you might know myself and Omar and Nolan over on Think Media for that. So if I'm going to do an entire desk setup, I always think, okay, the entire desk setup is a video. It's 10 or 15 minutes. And there's like 26 things in there. The studio monitors, the monitors, the camera, the tripod, the microphone, the lighting. But then I'm like, well, there's probably five of those things that are super interesting. Like what is the best budget USB mic for 2023? That's one piece of the whole tour. And I might think like DIY headphone hanger because I found a particular way to create a headphone hanger. And so what video inside of the videos you're already making could help you get more uploads, hit more angles. And at times the desk tour, the desk setup, right? Might get 10,000 views, 20,000 views, let's say. But the, the headphone hanger might get a quarter million. And so when you have more at bats, you have more opportunities to get views, reach people, answer specific questions. So anyways, if you want to check out that AI title recommendations tool and even get a 30-day trial of vidIQ's paid plan uh, for just a dollar, you could go to vidIQ.com forward slash think, or you could also go to the comments, depending on where you're watching this, and Victoria will drop that link for you, um, or check out the YouTube description. And that is one of our favorite tools. So check it out. And next up is Beach Bum and Dad. Smash like if you're learning some things, getting some ideas for your own channel. Life is hard, but at the beach, all stress washes away. This is a beachy channel where <laughs> I explore beautiful beaches and gather amazing seashells. We do have a business inquiries email address. We do have Facebook and Instagram. We have seashell pictures on the community tab right on nice, nice pictures yeah these are beautiful really cool. and it definitely is on brand for the subscribers i mean even the engagement there someone is definitely clicking subscribe for the beauty they're clicking subscribe for the beach we do have our store with spread shop integrated so that's cool to have this is great stuff too shells are precious i like selling shelling and maybe three people is that too many? So a bunch of kind of interesting uh, merch products, print on demand. That's nice. A couple live streams. And then we find our way over to, let's see what's happening with shorts. Hustle. When, Wednesday Wisdom Hustle. Uh, we'll come back to that. I wonder if Rob has opinions about this. But my question for the moment is just when did this come out? And this came out today. So an Abraham Lincoln quote over some shells. Interesting. And then we've got our main videos here with two years ago, uh, maybe a vlog of some kind with 24,000 views, shelling 101, a little more tutorial based. Whereas lately, we're doing a little bit of a vlog, maybe giving you a location and have you found any sand dollars, Pensacola Beach, shelling in paradise. All right, Rob. What are your thoughts? So, uh, just remind me of the subscriber size here. Uh, so 4,800, yeah, almost 5,000. 800 videos that have been at this and committed to it for a while at this point. And each view is consistently getting around about 500 views, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little less. Well, wow, cool, nice drone picture to kick us off for this video. Very nice. Um, I guess my question is from a broader perspective. Um, I need to see more of the titles and thumbnails, but it felt like it was a um, finding shells at the beach channel, which is something I've never come across in the thousands of channels that I've audited uh, up to date. So it's a completely unique 
uh, part of YouTube and there are audiences for everything on YouTube, but what is the ceiling for this audience? And given that they've done 800 videos now and you know, how long have they been on YouTube? Probably several years. Are they ever going to have any um, breakout content with this really specific type of content? And if the answer is probably not, then how, how do we make this, Sean, how do we make this content more accessible to a broad audience? How can we find something that's really exciting and interesting that's going to appeal to a huge audience as opposed to those who are maybe just interested in shells at the beach? Yeah, I also looked up, um, I looked up shelling on... Is that it? Is that what the, the genre is? Uh, well, I'm actually, this is a great conversation for everybody watching to think about your branding, your messaging, yeah. your positioning, because shelling heavy, uh, by Google's definition is heavy fire of artillery to uh, <laughs> artillery to saturate an area and hit a specific, um, uh, target. So what is shelling by the ocean? Uh, sea shelling is cool. So shells from the ocean, what is shelling? That is also uh, in Southwest Florida, shelling is the act of combining seashore and beach looking for the perfect seashells. So you're exactly right, getting clear on your language. We would call it in business, the TAM too, the total addressable market, all of that's thoughtful. When when that's the case though, I think what's what becomes interesting is I think you got to lean into like, you lean into storytelling, you lean into character development. If it really is going to scale, you lean into that. It's kind of the idea. If you think about a reality TV show where you, you, you take something that maybe people thought they wouldn't be interested in it because yeah. it's not something they do themselves. But the reason they watch is because of the narrative or the storytelling or whatever else. Um, because it definitely is a niche hobby. I also like to ask the question going deeper, Rob, on what you're ex exactly saying. What is the business model? And is is there even like things to to be able to be to sell to seashellers? Like there's stuff to sell to content creators, affiliate marketing. They want to buy cameras. There's stuff to sell to athletes. I just bought a bunch of home gym stuff and I was educated by a home gym YouTube channel reviewed 40, 24 of the different dumbbells, adjustable dumbbells. That was the individual whose affiliate link that I ultimately ended up using because of the education there. Now, that's not the only business model, but if we're thinking about some of those aspects, definitely thinking about how could you scale and make this perhaps more broad appeal or the people who are subscribed here, what else would they be interested in if it is? Because actually, I think if we go back, Shelling is, is is the niche within the niche. Ultimately, it would seem to me, I mean, I guess it's virtual shelling, but it's also just beachy adventures. And I think you start going beach, you go travel, you go travel vlogger, you go beaches, you go education about areas. That it's, uh, that, that's more of a kind of a proven, accepted, there's ways to do that. Uh, we might've been a little bit focused on the shelling here, but any Rob thoughts about how you could broaden this up or maybe um, scale the channel more? I think you're exactly right, Sean, with the storytelling aspect of it, how to weave in interesting and in intriguing, curious stories within your umbrella of shelling. I did actually do a search for shelling on YouTube, and it does come up with all of these seashell exploration uh, channels. Um, but what is a little concerning here is if you look at the top results, you know, 1,000 views 19 hours ago, 37,000 views two months ago, 3,000 views. Usually for a search topic to be really interesting, you want to be seeing videos at the top of a list with you know hundreds of thousands, tens of thousands of views um, for it to have a broad audience. So I think, yeah, Sean, maybe they do have to explore a little bit beyond their um, topic. Having said that, I found SWF Beach Life, they have 50,000 subscribers and their videos are getting 10,000 views per video, if not more. Uh, so that's certainly a, um, how do I, what do I call this? Like a, a passive collaboration where you can maybe watch some of their videos and see how they're talking about the conversation of shelling and how can they add to it if they want to st stay niched into their topic. 
Yep. And then the, the final thing I would say is kind of talking back to business model, because especially too, if you follow Think Media Podcast and you think and you're part of VRA, you know that we're we're asking about the practicality of of reverse engineering. How could this be a full time job? And I'm not sure what your current you know multiple flows of income or whatever, what day job versus retired or versus uh, different things. But I know you already have the merch thing going. Uh, but I did look up like shelling T-shirts, and it it for sure is a a legit subculture, right? And so I do think that you, no pun intended, your goal is to be a big fish in a small ocean and uh the goal would be to to think about perhaps you know recently we had shalene johnson on our podcast and i was talking about a thousand true fans concept and she was like i don't even think it's a thousand i think it's like 500 true fans you really build like a diehard community and there is maybe a channel memberships aspect or people buying your merch aspect um and so then it becomes a matter of um I'm not sure if you're Mark, if you just set up the store and upload the things and you hope that people discover these, um, but hope is not a strategy. I think there's something about, I'm not sure, maybe merch is going good for you, but maybe the way you build your merch and, and saying that, let's actually look at a video. You know, if I watch a channel like Phil DeFranco, he's talking about his merch all the time. But he's it's but it's not pushier because he adds so much value. So it's like it's if you weave it into the content then I think it becomes interesting. And so we did watch some of that drone footage, but let's check this out. Okay, so I'm going to grab a jacket and some shoes. Get some keys and coffee. Oh boy, I almost forgot the backpack. How many baggies do we need today? Well, I think we're gonna find at least one sand dollar. I'll take a couple bags. All right, here we are. I think I have everything. <laughs> there have been days where I forgot. This might not be our best example, but I am not into this intro for a couple of reasons. One, I'm not sure what's happening with the video and maybe it's just your smartphone or whatever, but it is way too cropped in. Already mm -hmm. like the low light morning shot of the shoes is not even my favorite shot, but especially it feels like it's 5 x on digital imaging, digital zoom. Um, and and thinking about that that hook. Now it is, I get the quick vlog edit. I see a little spot up here. Hopefully there's something. Already this is a better shot and more uh, visible. And and it could also, back to the idea, you could, you could hook it with different visuals or something different up front and then eventually get to the storytelling. This one feels, it's very vloggy. So I respect the video and its own merits for that regard because it literally is exactly what you sort of promised there. You're You're sort of like, I'm going to go vlog. It's It was the whole day in a linear fashion. But then the thing to reverse engineer backwards would be which type of videos perhaps maybe do a, a little bit better. I wonder why this one did better. And here's my exact point. You clearly can put out an, an intro that comes with a whole nother level of energy, a whole nother level of a hook, a whole nother le level of the opening shot being really strong. Coming up. And I mean, if this is my desire, like you're you're wetting my appetite for uh, attractive shells. Final thoughts, Rob. There were some good aspects of this intro, but this is dragging on a little bit. I mean, it had this nice uh, musical montage, and now we've had to wait another 20 seconds of like title credits swinging in. It's not, it's not a movie. We don't need to know who produced it and uh, and that type of thing. Let's just jump into it. I, I also thought that um, for that intro, there were static images. I think it just needed one or two B -roll, moments of B-roll motion and maybe one reaction from the creator themselves like to really hype it up like the, the what's it shelling on panama city beach it might have been something along the lines of i couldn't be shelling anywhere else better in the world like that could have been like the the, the moment to capture that that hook um but yeah credit to um him to for, for trying these vlogging storytelling videos especially when a lot of them are 15 to 20 minutes given that intro that we saw I think there is likely opportunities to trim down the vlogs a bit more so it has more pace and uh, it's a little tighter story. 
And so you could maybe try and do, you know, you could aim for your next vlog to be however long it usually would be, let's say 16 minutes, challenge yourself to make it an eight minute vlog and just see how that impacts the, the pace and the storytelling of a video. And as we land the plane on this channel before our next one, hit like if you're getting some insights using the AI title recommendations from vidIQ, I typed in shelling in Florida. And this first one, I mean, it just leaps off the page. So if you start with concepts like this and kind of ties back into what I was trying to communicate with storytelling, uncovering the mystery of shelling in Florida, you won't believe what we found. So that feels to me kind of like a little mini reality show. And the way the video then becomes structured would be how it's structured is storytelling based, hooking the viewer's attention. There is conflict and tension created at the beginning. Um, and then there's, you know, ultimately resolution in regards to what you ended up finding. It's interesting. Uh, discovering the secrets. There also could be very much practical based videos, five best places to go shelling in Florida, three, one must see beach, the best beach, unbelievable footage in Florida. If you have some of the unbelievable footage, that also could be like a long, long, long form video with nice music. It may be a, a collaboration, a compilation of a lot of the different footage you found. Um, and uh, vidIQ definitely helping us crank up that value, like shelling in Florida, what we found will shock you. Um, unbelievable, shelling in Florida will leave you speechless. I found shelling gold in Florida. And then I would also, uh, perhaps you could go deeper and deeper, deeper into shelling, but as, as you rise up a little bit more into beach bumming, the opportunity there seems extensive. And so thanks for being a part of the VRA community. Thanks for, um, uh, great job in the consistency. And I hope some of that stuff was helpful. Which next up we have Niraj Mathrani and he's doing a career success coach, leadership, productivity, personal development, new content every week. Um, we are at 258 subscribers, 55 videos, 16,000 views. He's built out the about page. Whether you're facing a rough situation at work, how to get more out of your current job or looking for a better one, I'm here to support you. So it's really career, career success coach. So I get it. Okay. So like you, you have a job, get promotions, become a leader. He's been in leadership roles. He's got his business uh, address. He does have a buy me a coffee, which is a kind of another way that you can get tips from people. Not so much even like Patreon or anything like that. It's just a way for someone to give you one, three, or five, five coffees. Oh, because a coffee is $5. So one coffee is $5. Where do you buy your coffee? That's cheap. My coffee is like $15. Shorts would be coming out here. And we've got our biggest one when your boss asks you dot, dot. We've got 1,200 views on a short. Let's see the energy. We got the little wireless microphone here. This question can make people nervous or anxious because they don't have the answer. I cannot adjust the volume of a short, but this seems really quiet to me. I don't know if it's quiet to you, Rob. I want to say it's max. Or maybe That's the thing. does it match the volume to what you said it on a long form video? On a long form last? Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. Looking over your shoulder. There's max there. So I'm now I'm maxed and I'm refreshing and I'm all yeah. there. And now let's see. Test. Can you give me an estimate? That's on it that does. Way. It does. That's a pro secret that hack tip, that isn't it? I didn't know that until we just tested it. People nervous or anxious because they don't have the answer on the spot. Which I actually wish you could control it here. You can yeah. be confident and competent by giving an estimated date to the estimate. Tip for everybody watching, I would say, is uh, that you can learn from this channel is the. Um, audio quality and the lighting quality is all great. And those things, they, they matter, especially in a channel like this, you know, production value, a lot of times should be reverse engineered on what is your promise? Like what's the expectation? It's maybe the expectation that you have a GoPro. If you're doing extreme sports, it's maybe the expectation that if you're doing like a tutorial on zoom, it's probably not going to be very good quality. But in this case, this you're teaching professionals. I like that you're coming across as a professional, good lighting, good audio, good communicator. I like that. Okay. Over to the videos. Looks like we are doing kind of a video podcast style. 
we certainly are because there's three episodes in leadership uh podcast that maybe just recently started and what are your thoughts rob i, I just wanted to mention as well in terms of a production quality on the show uh did you notice that he was wearing different outfits in the same show and i know from experience that that can take a long time to do to, to think about these different characters and then to get changed and then you realize that you the one part of the filming went wrong so you have to change back into that outfit and recut it that that is uh, appreciated um effort uh and uh, quality from a from a fellow creator i think sean the general value proposition here is a little too weak and generic when we go to a channel banner and we see what are essentially keywords, leadership, productivity, personal development. Well, I think everybody who's a, a, a personal coach, a career coach could just plonk those words in a channel banner. How can uh, Niraj stand out? What's their unique value proposition as this person? And how can you emotionally trigger a desire in myself uh, to watch content from you. How successful am I going to get? What, what what can I earn? Like, wh where do I see myself in the next two years? All of these questions you can answer as you build up an ideal avatar or, or viewer and then inject that into, you said this before, Sean, like your North Star or your creed. So just from that perspective, I think there's more that can be done on a branding. In terms of the thumbnails, what I'm seeing is a little bit of, I'm going to start from scratch with every single thumbnail that I make. And so they all look significantly different. So again, we lose some of that branding consistency uh, that is there as well. Uh, these are the most popular videos, right? That you've sorted by at the top. So we haven't had any real big breakout videos just yet, but they tend to be listicle how to's, um, which is fine. Uh, what I would say is that uh, you're covering a topic that's been covered on YouTube for the last 15 years or existence of YouTube. Uh, I am starting to recommend that a secret power in YouTube right now is short searching. Say that fast 10 times. Uh, we are looking at all of the uh, big search terms in YouTube education and we are remaking those search terms as shorts uh, not only because we're seeing our shorts search traffic increase significantly but when you do a google search those shorts are now appearing on google pages and when you think about you know a googler's intent you know i'm searching for an answer and i want a quick answer to it if i see a 40 second answer in a youtube short versus a 14 minute video i'm probably going to click on the short uh, so think about converting those long form search based videos into shorts as well i also um think that topic opportunities for you because uh, some of the things once you've developed a core set of skills so i think that there's something about you know everybody watching this whether you're new here or whether you've been rolling with us for a while and Think Media Podcast, VRA, I think that, you know, communicating, audio, lighting, editing, you have the ability to make some great videos. Yeah. So now we think Fantastic. topic, we could, uh, topic becomes a big opportunity. And I think one of your topics that could be interesting is really getting to know your viewer. Um, let's go practical. Today, you could take an action and everybody watching this could take an action to perhaps do it, um, exactly what you did here. If I could change one thing about what's your current job, higher position, more opportunities to learn, better manager, higher salary. I'm guessing it's higher salary. What would you pick, Rob? I, the, the one I would want is missing. It's like uh, happiness. More happiness, more, more lifestyle. More happiness. Yeah, just being content. Because through your job or like, would you call that more time off or more freedom? No, I think it's through my job because I always say that the moment I started working for vidIQ, I've not worked a day in my life because it feels like I'm getting paid to do the thing that I love. 
So uh, let me ask you too, if you could change one thing about your current job and you're watching this, drop it in the comments. I'll pull, pull some up in just a second. I'm guessing that everybody says higher salary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, there's four votes, it's hundred percent. So I mean, it was, <laughs> sort of like I, I, was uh, I don't even know if that was my answer. I'm just saying, I'm guessing. I'm like, yeah, you're gonna go with higher salary. It also is first and that could be like quiz theory or like survey theory. Um, but, you know, I realize your, you don't have a ton of subscribers. So anybody watching this that does this, you're, you know, building up your community to have culture does take some time. But nevertheless, you did get four votes, counting mine, and you get a little bit of insight about where you, sh you could go next. When you don't have a lot of audience feedback, you have to just dive deep into the psychology of your target audience. And here's what I would ultimately say and I would ultimately mean. Um, if you really want to help the, these individuals, you're asking, what are the top 10 to 20 questions they're, they're asking? And I'm sure like promotion, let's see if you have stuff on promotion, how to get a promotion. Okay, great. Um, how about, how about a higher salary? Let's type in salary. You want to increase your salary? Good. Um, but now, okay. Even that, you've made a lot of videos over the last couple five months. The core biggest desire, though, of the macro amount of people is probably higher salary without getting yeah. deep into philosophy. So you should probably make 30 videos about how to increase your salary. But then let's go a little bit deeper. And now we're back to the vidIQ title recommendations. How to get a raise. My secret strategy is revealed. Okay, make that one. Unbelievable tips on how to triple your salary. Make that one as well. Now, of course, we're not about hype here. You're actually find you find a case study, you do the research, you find someone who actually did triple their strategy, you reverse engineer the seven things they did to do it, and you turn that into a video, or you've done it at some point, or you did it over time. You're like, I started at my job at 42,000 a year. Eventually, I work my way up. Want big money? These salary secrets to change your life. Discover how to make a six-figure salary. This is kind of like we've learned that we make best camera under $500, best camera under $1,000, best camera under uh, $5,000. Like how to how to discover the best ways to make you know $100,000 a year, discover the jobs that pay $250,000 a year, discover how you know easy ways to ask your boss for a promotion to get five to ten thousand dollars more per year and so all that to say is like even when it feels crowded it's not crowded you just need these skill sets and you've got you need the content creation skill set which is there but then it's sometimes the positioning the topics um and i also then think it would be interesting where i'd call this trend surfing where you are a a, a distributor of data like meaning what are trends, th th five trends in s hiring, firing, layoffs? Is a recession coming? How to protect yourself from layoffs? Like there's so much that is that could happen within this, but what it all comes back to is the creator who understands the viewer best wins. And I, what that means is what is keeping them up at night? What are they stressed about? And what are the other four areas like, you know, how to ask your boss for more time off, how to create more freedom uh, and, and wellness in the workplace. But perhaps those topics might not have as much reach, but you think through what is keeping my ideal viewer up at night? What is their core desires? What are their problems and ambitions? Those types of things. I think on the other side of the great content you're creating, there's a lot of opportunity when you really dial in your topics. Smash like if you've been learning something today. And we're going to learn really quick here from some of the people here live. For Square Table Degenerates, they said, for me, it's only higher salary. <laughs> I mean, it's like, and it's one of these, uh, that's not surprising. I mean, especially too, inflation, like cost of living, like even just, they say money doesn't buy happiness. But I figure if you have enough money, or they say money is not the key to happiness. But I figure if you have enough money, you could have a key made. Um, that's a stupid dad joke, but, uh, ultimately, <laughs> uh, but like the, the, th the funny thing is obviously no money itself. You could have a lot of money and be miserable, but sometimes that threshold. So I would definitely go back when you can attach your channel and, and just quick little rant here, you know, the best online marketing 
topics and niches on a macro level are health relationships and money proven as far as especially even CPMs, even like whatever. Why? Because there's there's products and commerce supporting them. What does that mean? Relationships. People want to get married, figure out how to recover after divorce, figure out their dating life, figure out their single life, figure out their mother-in-law, how to deal with her, figure out how to deal with in-law. Relationships is what we all experience. Um, experience more love, strengthen their marriage, uh, money. How do I make money? How do I save money? How do I invest money for retirement? How do I get into crypto? How do I anything related to finance, personal finance, but money? How do I get out of debt? Should I use credit cards? And of course, that long tail is all the way down in a re, uh, you know, uh, real estate. It, yeah, all the way down into niches within how to make money, jobs, careers. Um, and then, you know, relationships, money, and then health. How do I live longer? How do I anti-aging? How do I feel more energy? How do I, you know, so there's fitness and there could be anything from biohacking to vitamins to doctors to medical. But here's the big unlock is you might go, well, my niche is not in that. What you need to do is attach your messaging and the value proposition of your content to those areas. Because what we're discovering in those areas is that those are all human needs. So, hey, you know, the reason I created this beach bumming channel is because there's a mental health crisis in the world. We all need more peace of mind. We need more significance or peace and and a place to escape. That's that's a thought. Then we also say that that one's a little challenging. You take one like this, then it is, do you want to experience more peace at home and have better relationships because your career is not stressing you out? Uh, do you want to make more money in your career? Do you want to learn how to optimize your career? For, 401ks, how to set up your 401k. There's like a million, the long tails that all, you know, how to set yourself a better at retirement in your career, how to set up your own retirement plan when your company doesn't have one, like the pain points, money related, and then relationships, relationships with coworkers, relationships with your boss, whatever. So if you actually plant your topic in either health, money, or relationships, then you're in a really good niche and it's very proven historically. If though you're not directly there, if you can figure out, we'd also call this value extension or benefit extension, where the benefit is on this channel, I'm gonna teach you how to make money. The further benefit is you're gonna have less stress because money problems are one of the leading causes of divorce. Your relationships are gonna be better. The benefit is, don't you want enough money so that you can invest in the right healthcare or healthy foods? So you have more energy. So you start thinking about how you can wrap into all of those things. That was quite the, uh, uh, you know, rabbit trail. But that all came all the way back to thinking higher salary right here. Peace of mind, Iceland Adventures uh, mentioned, peace of mind and future revenue. And did anybody else respond to the question of the day, which is, what do you want most from your job? Rob, any final thoughts on I, I, anything I, I just said? I, I do, I do actually. Um, and it's kind of um, been a, an unlock for me in the last year. Uh, what you've been dis describing is how to unlock browse traffic source for your channel. And what I mean by that, if I was to ask you, uh, Sean, what typically is the basic desire for any YouTuber for their channel? The very basic desire. What do you think it is? It, I mean, success, if, if that's not too generic. But, to how, but, but how, how do you get success on YouTube? What is, what is the lowest common de denominator? Uh, probably lowest common denominator would be views. Exactly. Okay. What is the title of this live stream? as an example, right? I've been experimenting over the last couple last year of saying, you know what, in this video, the actual content of the video is going to be about how to write a good title for your video. But the truth is a YouTuber in the mindset of learning how to grow their channel isn't really thinking about what they need, which is to write a good title or to have a good hook or to make better thumbnails. These are all uh, subheadings of the basic desire. 
So what I've been experimenting with uh, in recent videos and um, just generally on the channel is instead of trying to get to the top of the search rankings, what we want you to do is see our video on the home page. And you know, when you're on the home page, you haven't really decided what you're going to watch. But if you're seeing your basic human desire on the home page for the things that you're interested in, i.e. you want to grow your YouTube channel and you see a video that says small channels. Oh yes. This is talking to me. Do this, whatever this is, I'm going to hold that back and tell you what that actually is in the video to double your views or to double your subscribers. You know, it's a very basic title, but it's all about the emotional trigger. Then you reinforce that in the hook that, you know, if, if you watch this, thanks for watching this video. Did you know you're going to double your views and it only takes five minutes and you're going to do it by writing better titles with this formula I'm going to show you. So like within 10 seconds, you know, how you're actually giving them what they need, you know, in, in the thumbnail and the title is this is what you want. We know what you want because we're the same. We have these same desires, but we're just one step ahead of you as the content creator, because we know how to get you there with this tactic, whether it is better thumbnails, better titles, et cetera, et cetera. And through that, our browse traffic is now, I think it's double what our search traffic is. And that was the reverse. And this time last year, we were doing, I think, 1.7 million views a month. And now we're doing three and a half million views a month. And it's because of that mindset. We've managed to now have people discover us through search, which is fantastic. But the next time they're on YouTube and they see one of our thumbnails on the homepage, and that really has the emotional trigger to click, that's when there's a real unlock for creators like we're seeing here who's been like really specific about uh the three things to write a star performance review you know how could you reword that to say how to earn how to earn more money from your next performance review you know like just that re-angling of it so that's my piece uh, on this it's fantastic yeah. desire and i guess the last thing is you, you start to worry well is this clickbait uh I, I, you know you're just leading me into a video the way to answer that is if people are watching and they're commenting positively and you've got a high like to dislike ratio and YouTube is continuing to um, share your content with more people, then it's not clickbait for your target audience. No matter what the uh, minority naysayers may think. You know, and this is a good conversation because we're, you know, open for conversation. You know, the Farley Berg zone is actually saying what you're talking about is manipulation and you're trying to manipulate someone to do something, that would be the most um, pessimistic way of viewing that. It also could be a, an appeal to motive fallacy because manipulation would be uh, appealing to someone's motive. And the other way you could call that is persuasion though. You could call it influence. And the question mm -hmm. is influence could be used for positive or for negative. If you're trying to trick somebody and get something from them, for selfish reasons, yep. And they, do people on YouTube do that? Yeah, they do. Um, but at the on the flip side, um, what Rob is describing and we're describing is we're also talking about marketing. And I know marketing could get a bad rap. We're talking about human psychology, but we're also talking about a lot of people don't know what they don't know. So what they know they wanna do is they wanna get a higher salary and they wanna get a promotion. So when you go too specific, yeah, they don't click on it, so if you if you're heart centered, mission driven, if you want to help people, it is also your ethical duty to figure out how to reach as many people as possible ethically. As Rob said, he's like, you know, somebody could call it clickbait. Well, it's only clickbait is if you make a promise, but you don't deliver in the video. We made a promise in this video of how to get more views with a small channel. And if you apply everything we've been talking about over the last 53 minutes and over the next 25, then you are going to get more views. That will be a fact. If you upload videos according to the tactics we are talking about, then so ultimately, you know what this, this title could have been a lot weaker on this very video in this live stream if we potentially got too specific. What I think is interesting, Rob, is we also could have, I like both. I think there's a lot of long tail opportunity 
it's not the big growth, but it's being able to get the long tail opportunity of covering the day someone wants to. How do you fill out a R52 form for an architectural job of da da da? Like that'll never be a big viewed video. Mm -hmm. However, you might have the great answer to that. So YouTube is in a, that's very VRA. To your point, and all the way back to this channel, when we understand the viewer, and when we understand you know who they are, what they want. And what I'm also suggesting is when you understand just human psychology, a good book on this is building a story brand. What people don't eat, you, you can take the super deep. What do people mostly want on, on YouTube, you asked? And I was like, well, it's views. But if you really dig deeper, do we even want views ultimately? What's underneath the surface of that? We maybe want significance. We want a way to express ourselves. We want to be acknowledged as humans. Why do we even start YouTube channels? We want to express our creativity. We um, were bullied and we are trying to prove somebody wrong. We're getting super deep now, but it's like, why, why even start a YouTube channel? Or we want leads and clients and customers for our business. We want a bigger personal brand. Why? So we can have more money? Sure. So we can have more impact. So when we think about health relationships and money, Another question came in here about like, well, where would time management fall into this? Architectural Sheet Metal asked. And uh, time management directly, the average per time management, we've actually been looking at the search, search term. Where does saving time fall under? Like time management is not a big desire. It's a big desire for a very small person. Like it's not sexy. It's like productivity is better. We tested these two things in terms of search volume. There's more like Google Trends, like there's productivity is a little bit stronger because it maybe is a little more positive. Time management's like, Ugh. now some of you psychos watching this, myself included, you're like, no, time management's like awesome. Like I buy books on time management. Yeah, you and like 3% of the population. So this is also about understanding like higher level desires of why do we want to solve time? And I think we could tie this whole thing together with what Rob is saying is that when it ultimately comes down to the reason I want to save time is I want more time with my kids. The reason I want to save time is I want to get, I want to be, I want more money in less time because I can only work so much and I don't want to destroy my health and I want to sleep. So if you can get me more time, then I could do another side hustle or do more of the thing that generates money or create more. I could write more books or make more videos. In fact, you're watching this. Let me know why is it that you would want to save time? Is it ultimately that you want to save? So you could do more of the things you love. So you have more freedom. So by thinking about the benefit extension, and if you tie that into a title, you go core desire, which is like, you know, double your income, colon, five time management strategies for getting more done in less time. Uh, or five time management strategies, and, and you're attaching the strategy to the ultimate desire or one of the desires that people want. And if you study building a story brand, this talks about marketing in general. Uh, Donald Miller wrote the book. We'll link it up in the, we'll share the link. I highly recommend it for a lot of different reasons. But one of which is, again, at people's core is they do want, even the reason to have money is for what money gets you, not for money itself. Although maybe some people they could get into greed or just obsession with money. But money is just a tool that actually unlocks something else. I want to be able to go eat sushi. I want to be able to go on vacation. I want to be comfortable in retirement. I want to be able to not work all the time so I can have enough money so I can go visit my family. So anyways, let me know if you're getting any aha moments, any unlocks. If you have any questions, put four question marks before and after this. You never know where these streams are going to go, but we have taken a turn. And Rob, I think you were looking something up. What do you got for us? No, I was uh, doing a search for saving time on Google and all of the top searches are actually about um, why daylight savings time exists. Uh, so yeah, that probably isn't the right search term for productivity. Um, yeah. And so this has uh, been a fun conversation and um, with that, Today's stream, we have a couple more channels for you, but today's stream is brought to you by vidIQ. And you're asking for a good topic research strategy. Um, 
there are many, and I know that I, I believe Architectural Sheet member Metal, you're in VRA, so I would encourage you to check out your mo modules. You could go deep there. But um, to look at another cool tool that's very practical from vidIQ, under our, oh, by the way, all of this stuff is at app.vidIQ.com. So it's the web-based vidIQ platform. Um, there is some that's integrated into the vidIQ vision as well. Uh, but I love going here. You've got your personalized ideas. Now, to be clear, I'm logged into Think Media, our other channel. And I love this because I could look at why I stopped editing on Adobe Premiere. I tried YouTube automation for 60 days. These are recommendations, titles, but really topics. They're video ideas. How I gained 5,000 subscribers fast on YouTube. Growth tips for small YouTubers. By the way, one of the reasons why I love this too is you might go, oh, there's so many videos like that. But what's cool about this is the specific number. Like you start realizing that some people want to hit that 1,000 goal, that 5,000 goal. Okay, so those are personalized. But taking it back up here, you can actually get some customized video ideas by entering a topic. And so before we go to the next channel, I want to come over here to career success and look at what kind of, I'm going to type in career development, see where that takes us. Where it takes us, we don't know. And why that's doing it. Let me just remind you that you can get a 30-day trial of vidIQ's paid plan for just $1 at vidIQ.com forward slash think. And as we look at this, uh, career development. Okay, how to ace your job interview. Great. Nice. How to wow. rank your videos. So mix. Okay, how to ace your career path. Five ways to boost your career confidence. Five, six mindsets for career development. Five creative ways to market yourself. So in terms of topics, this would be one of many tools we'd recommend, whether, you know, asking your audience could be a way, community tab could be, hey, what is your biggest challenge? If you've got people following you, that's always helpful. But what I love about this tool is you can look into some of these things and uh, you could even click on it and then it'll pop up what are, Rob, is this basically the ranked kind of videos for this? Um, yeah, it, it's it's related and best performing videos based on it's kind of doing a YouTube search for like so it's searching on YouTube how to ace your job interview, and bring which is great because results. you could pop it open and see if there's inspiration on title and thumbnail right here and yeah. see how to ace an interview the number one insanely effective tip and maybe you what's cool then is you can also combine these tools so or again we're applying this to Niraj's channel we could go back to the title recommendations and say how to ace an interview and then go even deeper on that. So as we're building out the topic, we're like, okay, I'm going to do some job interview uh, tips. I definitely got those. So, and I'm sure you do, you probably have three tips, five tips. So you could come up with, okay, how, even how to ace an interview is kind of interesting. You take that angle from the vidIQ daily ideas tool, take it over to the AI title recommendations tool and then pop that in there. And uh, while that's working, again, if you wanna check out any of that stuff, then um, vidIQ.com forward slash think is where you can get a $1 trial of the paid plan. But also there's a free version of vidIQ that is incredibly powerful. And you can also download vidIQ Vision and plug that into Google Chrome. And that's where you get a lot of the data and you can see um, according if someone's tagged their videos, if they're ranking and where things may be ranking there. And uh, it's a it's a pretty cool thing. Thoughts on using the daily ideas tool, Rob? Yeah, it's been uh, one of our, I guess, first ventures into AI, and it was developed I think two years ago now, and it's just been slowly improving all of the time. And as you say, uh, Sean, one of the benefits is that it takes the work away or the hard work away from you if you're relatively new to youtube and let's say you've uploaded 20 videos but you're still trying to figure out exactly how to best target your audience it's going to be bringing up those ideas um at least i think up to 50 every single day but now that we've added this uh, new um customization one where you can say i want to go a little bit off what it's recommending me to do some searches as we've just done there with acing your job interview uh yeah re really really powerful stuff there and uh all i'm gonna say this is a bit of a tease but next week we're releasing something that could change your youtube life forever 
I may be able to tease it to you, Sean, after this stream, but whew, all I'm going to say is AI, YouTube, vidIQ, next level next week. I can't wait. And uh, I will hold you to that as soon as this stream is over. But we do have yep. a couple more channels. Um, I will say what I did was I took how to ace a job interview over to vidIQ's AI coach and said, write 10 titles on how to ace a job interview. And we've got interview success secrets, how to impress and get hired, nail your next interview, proven techniques for acing it, the ultimate guide to acing job interviews, tips and tricks, winning interview strategies, how to stand out and get hired, interview confidence. So anyways, you can check all of that out. That's another cool way of doing it. And with that, we have another channel that is Ellen Elizabeth travels. She has 1,100 subscribers, 61,000 views. Her channel was created at the end of 2022. Wow, that's fantastic to get 1,000 subscribers in six months and probably close to 4,000 watch hours, if not already hit that. Very yep. impressive. Educational videos, travel vlogs. Let's get that business email because who knows what opportunities will come your way. I just had a conversation earlier today too. It was actually with um, Mary's Nest, who is one of our Video Ranked Academy students. Uh, she's going to hit a million subscribers. And she's in a network of small uh, YouTube creators and different channels that are in kind of DIY and homesteading and cooking and all that kind of stuff. And uh, great consistency, great growth. Go for green. We always say go for green and, and you've got growth all around. But what she was saying was that small YouTube channels are getting a lot of brand deal opportunities, especially if you have a clear niche like this, somebody that mm. wants to get their, you know, travel battery, their solar powered RV battery in front of people or things like that. And um, I think that you just want it to be easy for people to contact you. So putting together that um, business email could be really helpful. Um, Okay. Your best performing video is Chris. Okay. Yeah. This is Christmas decorations inside of a RV. I do wonder, and, and perhaps this was found getting to look a lot like Christmas. Uh, this was perhaps, um, the YouTube shorts I know can, because of click through rate or because of whatever else, here's what this is missing. Just to get a little specific, perhaps a text title, and perhaps just a little bit of a difference in the title itself. At first, I thought that this was like a cabin and it wasn't clear to me that this was an RV, but now that's inferred in your mind because it's a, it's a travel channel. But I do wonder, it's like, you know, Christmas RV decorations would already be, you know, or small RV or whatever. And it, 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 it that could tap into the search, shorts search, but even just YouTube having enough data. But all that aside, having a headline or whatnot, if you built this out in YouTube shorts itself, using the text tool in YouTube shorts, if at the top during the first five to 10 seconds, you let me know what I was looking at. Cause when I was looking at the fireplace there, it is not clear to me that that is an RV. Um, and so if you want to hook the viewer's attention right at the beginning, they might, that is a very specific space to be decorating, um, for Christmas. So that's, that's kind of interesting and cool. So, uh, RV tour, solo female traveler living full time in an RV trailer four months ago, 20 minute video, 32,000 views, strong start. Hi, I'm Ellen. Welcome to my traveling home, AKA my cat sanctuary, AKA my karaoke hall, AKA my happy place. By the way, that here's why this was a great hook. Uh, there's a lot to reverse engineer here Full the opening shot is a story. The yeah. opening shot is a story. It is the, the characters involved in the story is the RV. The characters involved in the story is you. Hi, I'm Ellen. Welcome to my traveling home. You cast the vision. Welcome to my traveling home. Great. AKA my cat sanctuary. And in a very short time without boring me as the viewer that is hooking me into the story, you are sharing subculture connection points, what Pat Flynn calls super fans connection points with the viewer, whether I'm a cat person or not, it's I'm understanding AKA cat sanctuary. All right. Okay. I like you like, all right, we're ready to go a little bit deeper. I'm a cat person too. AKA my karaoke hall. 
Karaoke, aka karaoke hall, a little bit of personality. Oh, you're into karaoke, you're into music, you're fun. Uh, aka my happy place. My happy place. And we're just that, that was all in nine seconds. That was in well. nine seconds. Nine and seconds. and the shot is interesting too, because even in nine seconds, I'm not maybe even looking at you. I'm like, oh, cool RV. What do we got going on there? Okay, it's Mount Series. All right, what's and there's enough interest happening. A lot. That was some super fan power right there in nine seconds. And and what some of us, I think, make the mistake of doing is we're like, okay, yeah, I want to build those connections. I want people to know I'm a Trekkie. I want people to know I'm into StarCraft too. I want people to know I grew up listening to Wu-Tang. I want people to know. And so so we think like, so I should probably make like a documentary about all those things. No, you could you could seed those touch points. And even in the, you know, the opening of a video or whatnot, rather quickly. And for some people, they just blow right past them. But for others that are like, oh, okay, you're a cat person too. And boom, you have that opportunity to make that connection. Time codes, chapters, grateful. Because, and this video is also a great case study because it is, um, Got 32,000 views. Welcome so way to come out the gate really strong. 2019 Outdoors RV Creekside 21 RD. Okay, Rob, what are your thoughts? So what I noticed, if we were going to start to pick on some areas of improvement, uh, just looking at their videos, the thumbnails I thought could do with a little bit more um, work. What I'm not a fan of is this text not only because there's too much text on the thumbnails but the font itself is quite thin so it makes it difficult to read and you know sean as we were looking at, at that intro that was an intro that didn't have any text on it but you as you say it told so many stories uh without having to have uh really obvious imagery imagery on it and then just thinking about their most popular video, which was, uh, was it solo female traveler? Um, how often do they tap into that, um, target audience when specifically addressing their audience in the title and the thumbnail? Um, cause it's a standout video. I think it had 30,000 views and it's really speaking to who they want to attract. As that, that you see that is compared to the, the rest of their videos, like 32,000 versus 900, 400, 400. How do we, as you say, Sean, success leaves clues, make a part two of this RV tour, because it's certainly the standout video for them. Yeah, I think that's a great insight. I also do think there's many different distinctions about YouTube videos, but length I'm going to make a statement here in 2023, May 3rd. Longer is better. I don't even want to justify it. There's, there's it no bus or anything. It's just longer it, is better. It's it, it just longer is, longer is better. Um, it, it, what is funny, Rob, is you make statements or you make principles, and, and really a lot of principles are to be held in tension. Well, then are you saying don't make YouTube shorts? Did I say that? I just said longer is better. Are you saying, and I understand that you want the context, but what the reason longer is better is because at the end of the day, people want YouTube wants you on YouTube for as long as possible. So longer is better. YouTube wants people watching your videos for as long as possible. So if you made a three minute video and you only had one video on your channel, then the maximum amount of time they could spend on your channel is three minutes unless they rewatch the video. Whereas if you had a three hour video and they loved it and they watched the entire thing and other people also loved it, well, then that would be three hours of watch time. So just what I mean by longer is better is um, interestingly enough, this is a similar title, solo female traveler, traveler to the famous Janelle Alanis scenario. It kind of taps into that. And it's sort of like the story itself even. And I mean, she had a snake and the three cats, like success leaves clues. That's a whole nother level of tapping into uh, that. But like, you could re you could update this, but what I mean is if you can, here's the takeaway for everybody watching. If you cannot, you're not trying to make a 20 minute video full of fluff and nothing of interest. There is distinct value, a, a whole story here. If you can come up with a 20 minute and 43 second video that's rich, thoughtful, structured, edited, 
has a pretty good average view duration. Perhaps the average view duration on this video is six, seven, eight, nine minutes long, which would be wild because the average average view duration on YouTube is like four minutes. So even if it's 20 and average percentage is only 40%, but that's still eight and a half minutes average, YouTube's really gonna like that. And that approves, it appears that way because you got the 32,000 views. So when possible to make high value long content is all I mean by longer is better. And what is interesting is that the follow-ups, you know, are seven, eight, six. Now, again, there is a lot of other video videos and I'm not trying to like have that quote be taken out of context. I like all kinds of video lengths, um, but I do think that's interesting. The, the positioning, I'd like the thumbnail. I think it, it is interesting because it's a kind of a cool photo. You got the cat in there. And if we go full circle, the top comment, is it pinned? It's not even pinned. 46 thumbs up is from a woman with three cats. Mm. And Perfect. so Lots this just taps back into what one of the things we're doing on here. Never underestimate. YouTube is community. YouTube is relationships. And a lot of the nuances that we relate on family. Are you a parent? Do you have kids? Do you have cats? Are you in an RV? And ample, were you a deadhead? Did you follow the Grateful Dead? Did you, uh, you know, are you really into headphones and audiophile stuff? Are you into collecting cards? Are you into collecting shells? We love to rally around people with similar values, similar beliefs, similar community. Another good book to talk about is, um, to recommend is We're All Weird. Kind of goes back to um, a little bit of the marketing and positioning stuff we were talking about earlier. But Seth Godin wrote a book called We're All Weird, The End, The Myth of Mass. What do we always say? If you try and reach everybody, you end up reaching nobody. You, you don't want to try to reach the masses. It's the rise of tribes and the end of normal. World of Warcrafters, LARPers, Settlers of Catan, weird. Belieber, Swifties, weirder. Um, paleos, vegans, carb loaders, pretty weird. Mets fans, Yankees fans, Bears fan, fans, definitely weird. Face it, we're all weird. So why are companies trying to build products for the masses? Why are YouTube creators still trying to make videos for the masses? Why are we still acting like the masses even exist? Weird is the new normal and only YouTube creators that figure this out have a chance of survival. This book shows you how pretty good just reading his like thing it's like and you're like wow did seth pay you he did actually no i'm just kidding um, sean you, you kind of chat gpt that you said rewrite this as a youtuber and just fill that all of it's the, real time why yeah. yeah why are why are youtube creators still acting as if the masses exist the it's it's niching down but it's thinking about what are those rally points of like you know hey i'm a solo female traveler i'm obsessed with taylor swift i grew up you know there's a horse I'm pulling behind it. These are just different distinctions or I'm really into Pokemon. So anyways, we'll link that one up as well because I think that these resources uh, for some who are like, why don't you just talk about tactics? This is the game. Tactics actually are like the little activities you do, titles, thumbnails, perhaps your description, video optimization, even tactics on the hook. But if you don't have your overall strategy right, if you don't have the bigger strategy right, then tactics are going to honestly kind of be a waste of time. Tactics are the noise before defeat. Something Sun Tzu said something like that. Tactics <laughs> without strategy is the noise before defeat. Tactics without strategy. If you follow Rob, and by the way, Rob is from vidIQ, and, and in a second when we end, you can check out his channel, of course, and you should. You're probably already subscribed. Um, and you should get all the tactics. Like, let's figure out all the best practices. We have a lot of VRA members here. There is a lot of tactics, but tactics without strategy is the noise before defeat. Man, if your strategy is not right. So that's another resource. That book's called uh, whatever. We Are All Weird, The Rise of Tribes and the End of Normal by Seth Godin. We'll link up a couple of other resources as well as the vidIQ um, thing. But let me pass it back to you. Final thoughts on Ellen's channel. I think she's made fantastic progress in the six months that she's been on YouTube. She has an outstanding outlier video and whether it is to do with video length or um, just the uh, broad appeal of that video, 
Uh, or even as you say, Sean, the, the weird aspects of it is the not not the solo female traveler being weird, but like living in a, a in an RV with with three cats is that is that the weird aspect of it? I think that is your outstanding video, and I think you should maybe make a second part on that. You could probably make another video based off of that video just from the comments alone, because I think there was about two hundred comments, if I'm right. Yeah, there's there's tons of valuable information in those comments maybe it is a q and a a frequent last questions of a solo traveler with three cats in an rv um but yeah well done to this creator i would just think about maybe some thumbnail tactics to try and improve going forward yes amazing all right um rob uh i'm asking you publicly you have time for one more i have time for one more let's do it all right, so the carriage house. Thank you for vid vid visiting the carriage house, a channel centered around oh, heart. We don't and know. Home. Um, homeschooling mama four in a little farmhouse in the northern plains of Iowa. Here's the email address for business address. It's cool. It's multiple places. I hope that's not the login email address for your YouTube account, but hey, we're all learning. Um, and it might probably isn't 2.2 .2 million views. We're crushing. We got 25,000 subscribers, 151 uploads. Community tab 21 hours ago. Hey, is that how everyone's doing? How is everybody doing? Sending people hugs, miss you, can't wait to hang on Friday. Very nice, very engaged, 48 comments. Um, I like that. It looks like I would say this that I would love from you in terms of the last three posts, and you clearly are got a strong community. People are are uh, loving you. What I just want to see here, though, I want to see question marks. This is crushing. So this is something we can all yeah. learn from. So Daily this, posts. We need to and, be posting at least once a day on the community tab. And and I love your vulnerability. I was in the hospital. I had a follow up appointment. I'm getting better. I've been beating myself up. I haven't been able to get out of video. And then a lot of love was shared. So mm -hmm. I, I'm not suggesting like this should be changed. I am at, I am saying though, one opportunity I think you have here is to throw a question mark out there because it looks like these are a lot of updates about you, which is cool. It is a community tab. It's for all of the above, but like, you know, what would you like to see next? A couple polls because you, especially in your situation, you're going to get some good feedback. You're going to get some good insights. I just batch recorded seven, eight deep dive evergreen type think media podcast. They were 100% in response to a think media podcast community tab post that I got torn apart on because it was so poorly written. Rob, I, it, well, I didn't get torn apart. I got one negative comment, but of course the way we treat negative comments is, is yeah. we take them so personally um that i'm like i got torn apart everybody actually just responded to the question except for person who's like how about you check your grammar and i was like all right but listen to how <laughs> i wrote this what is your biggest challenge right what topics would for us to cover in future <laughs> podcast episodes that's reading it exactly how i wrote it what topics would for us to cover <laughs> in future so it was horrible i was like what? i think you were just channeling yoda but you're like you're a day early you know it's, it's may the fourth tomorrow but oh what topics would for us you yeah. like cover for channel that's a good point i should have said that i would i should have been like i'm yoda you're not even on my level so anyways here's the punt point though number one this is embarrassing number two i i came back to it and i was like was i you know anyways um and then you got but then i got some good feedback so it was out of these that I began the brainstorming and the development of upcoming videos. You have that big opportunity here and we all do, but of course, depending on the size of your channel, I want to encourage you to lean in and ask your community, what do they want next? The better you can understand what they're going through, pain points, et cetera, helpful. All right, Rob's going to break down his thoughts here in just a second, but We've had as much as 137,000 views on a cozy Christmas decorate with me. We have cozy fall kitchen here. We've got a lot of different great videos and clearly you've had a lot of success already. So Rob, how could we maybe take things even to the next level? I am uh, very encouraged by just the cadence of the channel and the views. I mean, look at that, a channel of 25,000 subscribers and 
uber consistency in the views. It's between eight to 12,000 views per video on the last eight videos that we can see here. That must suggest that there's a very strong uh, returning viewers. Uh, you've probably got a high average views per viewer. When you post a video and a previous viewer sees that thumbnail, they're likely to click on it again. So uh, great stuff there. Thumbnails, I'm trying to decide whether I um, like them or they need some improvement. I saw on some of the most popular ones, that, again, they were using some barely legible text. At the same time, it kind of fits the, the vibe of the channel uh, with this kind of cozy, homely feel to it. Um, there are some channel, some genres where this kind of works. Uh, particularly in beauty. I know um, certainly in dollar haul channels, they have these montage thumbnails with text that's difficult to read, but it kind of fits the the, the um, approach that the creator has. So, you know, I don't know if they necessarily need to change that. So I'm kind of just raising a lot of questions in my head, Sean, without I really addressing any sort of opportunities for improvement. So uh, yeah, if you want to bring the channel up again, but if you have any um, points to add as well, I'd love to hear them. But I wanted the, to uh, go a little bit deep. really strong. I wanted to go a little bit deeper on um, on the thumbnails. A lot of them feel slightly muted in your photography. And I think just a very basic update could be a brightness contrast. So I took your your thumbnail. I'm just putting it here into Canva. And I'm just I'm up 31 percent on the brightness of this thumbnail. I'm going to put contrast up. Uh, I'm actually going to reduce contrast down. And this is a digital image that's not, you know, the original grab or whatever, maybe even up, up saturation and just using Canva. And in my opinion, what I would also want to do here is perhaps crush the blacks. And uh, I'm not the greatest Canva user. I'm more of a Photoshop person. But what I'm ultimately, let me even see what auto enhance gives me. Um, and the what I am trying to uh, get across here is that th that might seem subtle, but the point to make is that some of these, I really like even how, even this one could be a little, it could pop a little bit more. It could have a little bit more of a glow to it, a little bit more of a pop to it. But when you go in here, it seems a little dark and that you might mm -hmm. say, well, and even this one, this one's actually backlit. I want the cookies to be glowing yeah, and, rather than to kind of just not be, so, so the skill sets to lean into would be a little would be perhaps photography and you may need to go DSLR man that's it's funny to think that that's dating me but mirrorless camera <laughs> but like proper you know uh camera smartphones are getting pretty good if it's smartphone then understanding lighting um but then also post production your white cabinets and everything else like you edit the photo right you want it to to glow just pop just and and it has the potential to do that on the other side of two skill sets photography and photo editing and then sometimes it might seem like you're getting a screen grab from maybe the video so even your newer ones uh there's definitely something happening here where it just doesn't quite have that pop and for how much skill how many skills you've developed that is just waiting for you on the other side of of making some tweaks um to that perhaps maybe getting a soft box again i see your the kitchen is obviously going to be consistent for you and so you got this 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 uh window behind you so what is the lighting in front of you if we take this conversation just briefly to a whole nother level for the content creator of your status and all of us but for your status anyone who's taking content serious and is thinking about doing this over the long haul it is relevant to consider upgrading your house or areas of your house to support your content creation. The co-author of YouTube Secrets, Benzie Travis, is a full-time vlogger with him and his wife, Judy. They thought about the lighting across their whole house because they film in their whole house. But this could be as simple as getting higher wattage bulbs in your kitchen lights. That could be as simple as that because you're like, I'm filming in my kitchen all the time. I'm mainly using my kitchen lights. It could be as simple as getting higher wattage bulbs or higher lumens brightness bulbs in your kitchen that also have adjustable color temperature. 
we're going out. It's just too deep. Uh, and you could then go, depending on the time of day, to match the color temperature of your kitchen bulbs. That's more amber, kind of a night color, or more of a daylight color, so that the, your whole kitchen just comes alive in brightness. So to the tune of, I don't know how many can lights you potentially have in there, uh, but to the tune of like four new light bulbs, you could kind of change the dynamics of the place you're consistently filming. Going a little bit deeper, you could say, well, one of our goals, money's coming in, let's actually install some new lighting. And for all of us watching, just consider that how you could apply that to yourself. Over time, you know, you're, it's never about your resources. It is about your resourcefulness using what you have today. Excellence is doing the best with what you have today. But I would imagine brand deals are coming your way, stuff's coming in. So there's some opportunities that you have to uh, to do all the above. And then the final thing is the reason I say mirrorless camera is a mirrorless camera can take bad lighting situations or less light or whatever. And with the proper editing, all of a sudden it looks like there was all the light in the world. It's just, they're basically cameras that can perform better in low light. So that is not, I don't mean to go too much on a tangent there because that's not like the biggest deal, but it certainly is going to help. I know Rob, you mentioned a little bit more about fonts, things like that. Let's land the plane officially on a little bit of the video. It's Becca and welcome to a gentle morning here at our little farmhouse on the northern plains of Iowa. The weather's been so beautiful and refreshing. Flowers are in bloom and the earth is spoken without sound. Birds sing not because it has an answer, but because it has a song. So <laughs> this is amazing. I'm just so, like I'm, I'm laughing because it's so amazing. Mm -hmm. It's like the because the, the earth is smoke spoken, not because of Amazing. Here with me um, today. Okay. And uh, what's also interesting is I, I've got to lean into the style. The style is different than what we would typically um, talk yeah. about, but but it is amazing. Like it, And your audience, I think, is coming for this. Plus, you have promised calming, slow living and homemaking. And this would be the opposite of the Mr. Beastification of YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I love that. And I think there's a big opportunity you know, for that. And so, uh, stop Rob, there for a visit here at our home. You know, when we were 20 seconds into the intro, I was thinking this is, uh, not going fast enough for me. And then as soon as we got into the, uh, the voiceover and more calm, you know, like the candles being lit and these, uh, affirmations, I thought to myself, you know what, this video isn't for me, but that's perfect because it is for their audience and their audience loves this content the the production quality is off the scale you would see this on like uh uh i, I don't know what one of us a, a cooking channel on a sunday morning uh, uh, it's just fantastic uh yeah i think one of the reasons why viewers come back to watch their content is because it's very difficult to replicate the standard and the, and the quality here uh, so yeah i, I guess now we go back to the um the gateway to the video even more the thumbnail the thumbnail should be setting the the standard is set in a video whereas it should be that the standard set in a thumbnail so whether you want to uh like outsource it you know hire like a professional thumbnail creator to just make two or three thumbnails to really make them pop and then you got the design and a template to continue making it yourself uh yeah like sensational content incredible yes um all right and uh one of the questions came in is uh the carriage house this channel recommended or asked do you recommend listing your latest video as a channel trailer to potentially get more views what would your recommendation be for her as well as others about what video to use for channel trailer should you use channel trailer rob so unless you're really good at what a channel trailer is, is which is to introduce your channel within a, within 45 seconds, which I think is really difficult to do. And I abandoned this idea several years ago. I take the video that best represents my channel and has a very high 
conversion of subscribers. Uh, that's typically what I do if I don't want to make a channel trailer specifically. You may want to create a different channel trailer for those who are already subscribed if you're trying to get a call to action out of it, be it signing up to an email list or buying a product or service. That's my general advice, Sean, but I haven't really thought about channel trailers for a good long time. So I'd be fascinated to know if you have a, a counter suggestion to that. Yeah, no, I think uh, we, I think they're cool if you have one. We do not. We we launched the Think Media podcast with one. That's back when it was called the Think Marketing Podcast. So it's, we no longer use that and we haven't changed it since. We do typically, to, we just look in our uh, library of the video that is, um, most likely to convert subscribers uh, or that has been good at consistently converting subscribers or essentially that has a, a level of satisfaction. And then you just figure like, what is a good first impression for you? Yeah. So I think that's a, a good way to go. It's a quick way to solve it. Um, uh, lastly, and I want to let Rob go, but I do want to illustrate here um, what I was talking about photography earlier, I do think that perhaps my points were clear, but what I just did was look up a, a farmhouse um, type photography and I found this blog post. So a couple things that this individual is doing is uh, to the left of this photo is the window. And in your video, I could also see that certain scenes are lit in a certain way because of the light source and the angle of the light. So this is a pretty good photo and it has that more airy look to it, as does this photo, photo with the window over to the left again. And then um, back to this shot, similarly as well, it has that airy and it's kind of an overexposed look. I'm not trying to influence your style any in any way i am just suggesting that i think we could all learn about this stuff in regards to best practice the level of ads on this the level is so funny has sean been shopping on express is express retargeting me right now <laughs> um so in some cases though this is it's a photography thing it's also a light thing it's also how do you fake light uh we recently got um i wonder victoria if you could find me a link to uh a the lights that kyle bought um but it's a tube light and these my friends could revolutionize your and you'd want uh what bicolor maybe and that means that it could be multiple different colors and for video so it's a light that we can carry around and put in odd places that can really kind of uh you don't necessarily need RGB. And in this case, uh, this isn't really the style of the channel, I wouldn't think. Uh, <laughs> but, but you take a light like this and you could then, um, you maybe find ways to mount it. Again, soft boxes work, but what I'm after is even this idea. Like you start thinking that these types of lights could simulate window lights at different places in the kitchen and really change those different shots. And that's just, just a, a caveat. So. Um, with that, I have a few questions that came in, but I'm going to let Rob go. So Rob, people want to check you out. People want to follow you. I'll be on for just another about 10 minutes to answer some of the four question marks that came in. If you got any final questions, always four question marks before and after, but Rob, if people want to connect with you, follow you, where are you at? If you search for vidIQ, then you are very likely to find me. Um, I decided a while ago that in terms of representing myself on social media, it would be all through vidIQ because once I finish work for a day, I just want to put aside the internet, social media and everything. But while I'm in my work hours, vidIQ will find me there in a YouTube community tab on Twitter, Instagram, do check me out. And Sean, I'm more than happy to stay on and answer a few questions. Uh, up until the top of the hour, I'm free. But there is something I do want to watch at nine o'clock. So it is quite late here. But yeah, I can stay around for a bit longer if you want me to. Then please. Yes, yeah. I just wanted to make sure we uh, I asked for that earlier. And uh, here we go. Is the AI title generator in the phone app? And this is being referred to the vidIQ AI title generator. I think it is, but I'm going to check right now while that question is being asked. All right, we'll be back. So if 
we have a high performing video, how do we analyze it? What analytics should we consider? I think that'll be a fun question for uh, Rob, but the list would just be check out your audience retention curve. What are the positive things you can learn from it? What are the negative things? The hold, is there any, like if it holds attention, audience retention curve, if there's any significant dips, what can we learn from those? Is there a point in the video where it drops significantly? What happened at that point of the video? Is there a point in the video where it was, it goes up? What does that mean? It means people re rewound. One of the biggest insights or one of the biggest opportunities is to study, perform any video that people rewind. It creates a pyramid. They rewatch it. They rewatch that part. That part could be a short. That part could be a new video, like what you talked about there. Someone's so interested in it or that part was interesting. It tells you when you should cut clips out or when shorts could be there. Or it just might provide an insight like, oh, people found this was interesting. I should weave this in at other uh, in future content as well. But Rob, what did we learn about that? AI Let's tone? see if my, uh, yes, there's a Zoom. So if you go to the optimized section of a mobile app and type on a video, then you can get title recommendations right here on the mobile Beautiful. app. Beautiful. And again, today's stream was brought to you by vidIQ.com forward slash think. If you want to do a 30 day trial of vidIQ's paid plan for just $1, head to vidIQ.com forward slash think where you can get the AI title generator and a lot of other cool tools to help you get more views, optimize your channel, make better data driven decisions. Link is in the description down below. So check that out. Um, I'm eligible for monetization tonight. Congratulations. <laughs> Should I immediately turn it on? Or is there a reason to wait? I've seen Eves. I believe that means Daryl Eves say wait, but I've never heard why. Well, first of all, uh, I don't know if his sound effects is going to work, but uh, my light should turn green to indicate you've reached monetization. Congratulations. Um, I never want to um, disagree with anything Daryl Eves says about turning on monetization, about whether to turn on monetization or not. I would certainly start experimenting with one or two videos to get an understanding of how monetization works for your channel and how much revenue you could potentially earn from those videos. But I think the broader question is, Sean, cool, you've got monetized, but have you been sitting on your hands waiting to get monetized when what you should also be doing is thinking about other income revenue streams, be it sponsorships, brand deals, uh, reaching out to companies who you think would work well with your audience, selling courses, products, digital services. Ultimately, for most channels, ad revenue represents a small percentage of a whole income revenue pie. So to try and not disagree with Daryl completely, I would say select two or three videos, turn on monetization, just to get an idea of how much CPM you're likely to earn on your videos, how it impacts your viewers' um, attitude to your content. Because they may be seeing adver adverts for the first time on your content, so it might be interesting to see how they react. Yeah, my guess is, uh, guessing what Daryl meant, and I think I think this might be what it is, is there's sometimes a, a good common recommended advice of you should hold off monetizing your audience, right, meaning sure. you should build trust, you should build goodwill, you should be patient, you should you know, add more value really at the end of the day, money too, right. Is in exchange for value. Our income is directly correlated to the amount of value we add to the marketplace. Whereas in some people, people might be like, you haven't added value yet. All I met you. And it's like, you tried to sell me a car. So that would be what not to do. I think, and agreeing with Rob, Daryl's a legend, um, and very smart, but my thought specific, specifically about YouTube ad ads, is I don't think people understand the difference. Meaning this, if you don't pay for YouTube premium, the the culture on YouTube is ads. Mm -hmm. And you're going into that 
it's it's also true on Hulu. And so whether people like it or not, I don't actually think a lot of times they think of ads as attributed to the creator. Though if you're here, you're watching this, let me know. If you think about that, you're like, oh my gosh, I wasn't getting ads on this person's video. Now I am. Because even when you click on video, sometimes it may or may not be that an ad gets served, even if the channel is monetized. And it could be, I know that there could be sometimes where longer videos, people like hammer the middle with mid rolls. And, and maybe it's like, come on, man. And maybe people can see that. But as a general rule, you turning on monetization, um, and then there's the YouTube conspiracy theory that, no, if, if you don't turn on ads, it doesn't affect whether your video gets promoted or not. And uh, we believe that's true. However, what does YouTube ultimately want? How are they even going to stay in business? On we content? made a video about that exact topic because, um, you know, ironically enough, I, I forget this, we didn't turn on monetization on the vidIQ channel until last year so we we've, we've been offering content ad free for five years and you know you raise a good point sean about uh building trust with your audience so when we first turned on monetization we kept a really close eye on if it impacted views and views actually went down slightly over the first 30 days that we monetized our videos so i think it's a conspiracy theory but since then, in the last year, our views have gone up about 50 to 100%. So who knows? Maybe it does have an impact. You didn't hear it here, though. I'm, I'm not going to conf confirm or deny that. Andrea says, can you change settings and monetization after? You can. You can turn it on and off. You can yep. change the different ad formats. You could do a live and turn it on for the replay. But you can also turn it on before you go live so that they're running as soon as live viewers are joining as well. So, um, okay. Uh, how can wholehearted Huli... Thanks for being here and thanks for being a part of VRA. I really appreciate you. How can I stand out in a crowded niche of productivity and personal development? Uh, I'll give you my take and then uh, Rob, I'm curious, any thoughts? Um, Zig Ziglar says it's better to be a meaningful specific. You don't want to be a wandering generality. I think that one of the best, when I think about something like personal development, I like to think about something specific, for example, running. And if there's a running channel, you could argue that's a personal development channel because it's going, it's with mindset. And you could also argue that, well, having to be a runner, albeit hobbyist, there's books on running, documentaries on running. There's whole cultures around it, rich role, the whole thing. There's shoes on running. There's whole and by the way, as soon as I plant my flag and say, I'm going to start a running channel, even with how crowded it is out there, in my opinion, the opportunity is just so endless because you're a meaningful specific, especially too. then you niche down like running for baby boomers, how to run marathons as a baby boomer running, you know, there's, the, there's a track level, there's a hobbyist level, there's all different distinctions. We have a video coming out on the Thick Media podcast, so make sure you're subscribed on 13 different ways to niche down. We think like there's personal development, there is. And then there's 13 distinctions. You could go deeper than that. So that's coming soon. But ultimately, I like to think about, okay, personal development. I love book summary channels, uh, personal development. And where I think sometimes people struggle is they just maybe start sharing personal development talking head videos. And you can seem like an echo in doing that. So it's how do you potentially achieve productivity? Yes, productivity could be you could get in front of a whiteboard. You could share your screen. You could just deliver tips. But is there a different vehicle for which to convey productivity? Or is there a higher, could your niche, how can you stand out? Oh, this, I guess, is also telling you, how can you stand out? in a crowded niche of productivity, don't niche around productivity and personal development only, but niche around a particular person, a particular demo, niche around helping men, Gen X, helping millennial men boost their productivity, strengthen their mindset and, and, and grow. So the niche became millennial men achieve a certain thing. And now you're not a wandering generality. You're a meaningful specific Rob. 
I look at it from this perspective. If you're in a crowded niche, how do you stand out? You could be faster than your competitors, in the commas, to the YouTube market with your content. For example, ChatGPT has been revolutionizing productivity. So imagine if you were releasing the latest videos that nobody else has yet thought about in terms of productivity for chat GPT. You can be bigger than anyone else. And what I mean by that is if somebody is going to offer 10 productivity tips, well, you know what? I'm going to offer 50 productivity tips in eight minutes. You're not going to be able to get that anywhere else. And it's unique content to my channel or put simply you're better than anyone else at the content you're delivering. And if you're going to go through that avenue of approach, I think there's three things you want to focus on uh, to begin with and get really good at really quick is your title and your thumbnail, which we have talked about at length during this live stream, and then also the hook. Those are the three critical components to getting viewers in the, the door of your video and then getting to sit down in your YouTube theater in the first 10 seconds with that hook. Woo, final question. Smash like if you can get value today and share uh, any aha moments in our culture. We are hashtag action takers. And we're not just here for information. So uh, we want transformation. We want to apply what we're learning. So any insights and anything that you're going to do update on your channel, anything that you want to apply to your next video, anything you want to apply to your next title or thumbnail. Uh, the final question is back on the carriage house. What about end screens? I typically do 10 seconds branding ending with my videos. Any thoughts on how to make an engaging ending or keep my audience from dropping off? And here is an example of that same video we were watching. We're ending on the cat, the birds, the candle. The candle's blown out. And now thanks for watching with link somewhere else. A channel and one video 10 seconds landing ending the plane I, and just to be clear i'm not sure if that's what she's saying she always does so let's check it out and if you have any thoughts about how end screen should be used or how this could be different wow. so it looks as if there's quite an extensive musical montage to lead out the video I think that could be an indicator to the view that the video is finished, especially putting thanks for watching. That is a trigger for somebody um, leaving the video. Also, what I do personally is I give the viewers just one link. So not even a subscribe button, just a link to the video that I intentionally want them to watch. And the only way I'm going to do that is if I tell them what they should watch and what they're going to get out of it. So it might require a bit of a last 20 seconds voiceover. And again, try not to say, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Something more along the lines of, so now you're really relaxed. We're sat in front of a sofa, drinking some hot coffee with a roaring fire. You're getting a little sleepy. And this is the next video you need to watch to finally send you to the land of counting sheep just made it up in my head right now. I hope that's going to make you click on the video. I love it. Um, and uh, Rob has a show to watch in two minutes. And so I want to shout out some <laughs> of the aha moments, though. And uh, the ahas, thank you for being here. But I will niche down, niche and down, niche. Rob's up in Canada. Internationally, we know it's pronounced niche here in niche. America. We say niche. Niche, I sometimes say. Um, more community post, aha moment. Uh, Victoria on Think Media team, hit like if you found today's stream helpful. That would be helpful. Appreciate you, whole, wholehearted Huli. Thank you. Really appreciate you. Grateful for you. Um, aha moments are coming in. And so thank you for sharing those. We are hashtag action takers. The Carriage House, really appreciate you. Grateful for you. Uh, aha moment, switch from TubeBuddy to vidIQ. You heard it here. I couldn't possibly comment on such an action, but. But we can head nod. And uh, 
<laughs> and uh, thank you again, y'all. Thank you, Rob. Appreciate you. Check out the vidIQ channel. Check out a summary of links. We did have two book recommendations today. Some good ones. Those should be in the description. Uh, you can get the $1 vidIQ opportunity. Uh, that is available in the description too or in the comments. And uh, I want to thank you so much for being here. My name is Sean Cannell, Rhymes with YouTube channel. This is the Think Media Podcast. Smash like if you got value and I will see you in another video. Peace.